I'm Jim Kircher, and a part of town that in its heyday must have been one of the busiest places in St. Louis, at least on weekends, from Friday night at the synagogue to Sunday at the churches. In the early part of the 20th century, this part of King's Highway, just south of Del Mar, this was the place to build big, impressive, classically designed buildings. People started calling it Holy Corners, and they still do. It's now the Holy Corners Historic District, and it includes six buildings all erected in the first decade of the 20th century. Except for the first Church of Christ Scientist built in 1904, the Houses of Worship, Temple Israel, St. John's Methodist, and Second Baptist have changed hands and at times have sat empty. So we came to see how one of these great old buildings has been given new life in a way its builders could not have imagined back in 1902. The Old Methodist Church is now home to Link Auction Galleries, named for the church's architect, Theodore Link, perhaps best known in St. Louis for designing Union Station. And we came to meet Susan Kine, one of the art appraisers who started this business and decided this building was the place where they wanted to set up shop. It is um, a really fabulous space. Um, but you know, it was it was very challenging to um, move in. We had a lot of renovations that we needed to make. Mm -hmm. uh, the, for instance, the copper had all been removed. Yeah. Uh, there uh, had been people living in the building. It was vacant for many years. Yeah. So we all had I can all, think of is plaster, plaster and roofs and heating and cooling. Heating and, and all cooling. Of that stuff. It is uh, a monumental yeah. undertaking, to yeah. say the least. But, um, but we really love this space, and we love the fact that we're uh, bringing life into this building. Yeah. Plus, Items that were to be auctioned off in late October were in the hallways and smaller rooms of this old church, but not in the main sanctuary, which is still in pretty bad shape and really bigger than they need. From the outside, you know, I'm thinking that you've got this humongous space. But this is a nice little room, so when you're showing furniture, and paintings, I kind of get a sense of what, it, what it's supposed to look like, right? It does work very well for us. Um, I think this at one point was a parlor. Uh, there were classrooms. So we were able to adapt the space very nicely for offices and, um, and gallery space. Now it's possible you're thinking Susan Keim kind of looks familiar. And if you watch one of PBS's most popular programs, you may well have seen her there. That's how we first met her, in a much more hectic environment. In July of 2017, Antiques Roadshow came to St. Louis, set up in America's center to welcome thousands of people with thousands of antiques and collectibles. Some very valuable, many not so much. At the paintings and drawings table, there she was. She didn't have to go far this time, but she does travel several times a year at her own expense to other cities where the Antiques Roadshow is taping. On one Saturday in St. Louis, they got three episodes that will air in February. It is a long, grueling day. It's almost like speed dating, isn't it? You it have is. To, you have to come up with something pretty quickly and try to be as accurate and honest as you can in a short period of time. And to be honest, there are things that, um, that come to us and there's not a whole lot you can really say about those things. You know, it might be a reproduction uh, that was done in the 70s and we have to talk about that. Um, but, but there's also really hidden gems that, that come in that um, really make up for that. So, uh, you know, you have a guest that has a reproduction and then you have someone that has a a really fabulous, rare piece, and you have to give them equal time. But it has to be also mentally exhausting to do what you do that long, person after person after person. It is, you know, you're, you feel like you've got this frozen smile by the end of the day because you've had to be nice to so many people for about a 13 hour stretch um, and not just be nice but just be um, as informative as you possibly can. There are strict rules appraisers cannot conduct any business for themselves no lining up customers at the table but there are business cards that people can pick up on the way out. 
and a couple of etchings of local St. Louis scenes that had been brought to another Antiques Roadshow appraiser did end up at the Link Auction House. One's a picture of a Soulard playground, and the other is a picture of holy corners, including this building. So when this print arrived at his table, he said, I need to find Susan, she needs to see this. The owner called me a, you know, a week later and, and consigned it to the auction. This was the chapel and this is where we conduct our auctions. This is a classy space. It's been a, a <laughs> nice space and it was very easy to convert this to an auction yeah. area. It's a big open room. We have um, the auctioneer, uh, the oh, perfect sure. spot for an yeah. auctioneer. All we had to do is install a monitor where you can see the lots uh -huh. that are being presented as the auction is taking place. Yeah, yeah. The day we were there, people were stopping in to look over the items that would be auctioned off that week. Paintings, furniture, jewelry, sculpture, household items. Some had been acquired by people from around the world. Others were directly tied to St. Louis, like this gigantic World's Fair display and this ornate sampling of a local calligrapher's work. And yes, there are people who love exactly this kind of thing. And they're, you know, in researching people that might be interested in purchasing something like this, I came across all kinds of guilds that exist all over the country. Um, and so it's, it's funny, you don't hear about that uh, at all until you really start digging right. in. And that's what makes this job so interesting because you're always learning about something new that, um, and it opens up an entire world. Yeah, that's neat. Now, if you're an Antiques Roadshow viewer, you know that some things are hot and some are not. Big old Victorian furniture, the market's cooled off, but it seems everybody wants mid-century modern. And at the Link Auction House, we chatted at the 1957 speaker cabinet that was one of the stars of this auction. And it's a classic example of mid-century uh, modern design. And, um, and it's hot right now. People can't get enough of it. And um, like you say, people were, were tossing it or giving it to the goodwill years ago. Now all of a sudden they can't get enough of it. So, and that's cyclical. So when you get into the auction, you don't really know what's going to happen, do you? No, no. Uh, we, we try to be as accurate as possible with our estimates and, and the information we provide, but you really never know what's uh, going to happen until it comes up on the auction block. In this business, it's not unusual for a new generation to discover value in something that their grandparents had tossed aside.